Wherever women gather together failure is impossible. It was we, the people, not we, the white male citizens, nor yet we, the male citizens, but we, the whole people, who formed the union. Men, their rights, and nothing more, women, their rights, and nothing less. Forget conventionalisms, forget what the world thinks of you stepping out of your place, think your best thoughts, speak your best words, work your best works, looking to your own conscience for approval. I declare to you that woman must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself, and there I take my stand. We shall someday be heeded, and when we shall have our amendment to the Constitution of the United States, everybody will think it was always so, just exactly as many young people believe that all the privileges, all the freedom, all the enjoyments which woman now possesses always were hers. They have no idea of how every single inch of ground that she stands upon today has been gained by the hard work of some little handful of women of the past. I look for the day, when the only criterion of excellence or position shall be the ability and character of the individual, and this time will come. Nothing is hopeless that is right. Men, their rights, and nothing more, women, their rights, and nothing less. I do not assume that woman is better than man. I do assume that she has a different way of looking at things. Organize, agitate, educate, must be our war cry. There shall never be another season of silence until women have the same rights men have on this green earth. Sooner or later we all discover that the important moments in life are not the advertised ones, not the birthdays, the graduations, the weddings, not the great goals achieved. The real milestones are less prepossessing. They come to the door of memory unannounced, stray dogs that amble in, sniff around a bit and simply never leave. Our lives are measured by these. Liberty, humanity, justice, equality. I distrust those people who know so well what God wants them to do, because I notice it always coincides with their own desires. There never will be complete equality until women themselves help to make laws and elect lawmakers. Women should have equal pay for equal work and they should be considered equally eligible to the offices of principal and superintendent, professor and president. So you must insist that qualifications, not sex, shall govern appointments and salaries. Failure is impossible. Inconsistency is the jewel of the American people. No self-respecting woman should wish or work for the success of a party that ignores her sex. Why should we not pray to our mother who are in heaven, as well as to our father? Oh, if I could but live another century and see the fruition of all the work for women. There is so much yet to be done. Cautious, careful people, always casting about to preserve their reputation and social standing, never can bring about a reform. Those who are really in earnest must be willing to be anything or nothing in the world's estimation, and publicly and privately, in season and out, avow their sympathy with despised and persecuted ideas and their advocates, and bear the consequences. We ask justice, we ask equality, we ask that all the civil and political rights that belong to citizens of the United States, be guaranteed to us and our daughters forever. The day will come when men will recognize woman as his peer, not only at the fireside, but in councils of the nation. Then, and not until then, will there be the perfect comradeship, the ideal union between the sexes that shall result in the highest development of the race. I will cut off this right arm of mine before I will ever work or demand the ballot for the Negro and not the woman. Our job is not to make young women grateful. It is to make the ungrateful, so they keep going. Gratitude never radicalized anybody.
Independence is happiness. The worst enemy women have is in the pulpit. If all the rich and all of the church people should send their children to the public schools they would feel bound to concentrate their money on improving these schools until they met the highest ideals. The religious persecution of the ages has been done under what was claimed to be the command of God. I expect to do more work for women's suffrage in the next decade than ever before. To think I have had more than 60 years of hard struggle for a little liberty, and then to die without it seems so cruel. Cautious, careful people, always casting about to preserve their reputation and social standing, never can bring about a reform. Those who are really in earnest must be willing to be anything or nothing in the world's estimation. I have known nothing the last 30 years save the struggle for human rights on this continent. If it had been a class of men who were disfranchised and denied their legal rights, I believe I should have devoted my life precisely as I have done in behalf of my own sex. For a people is only as great, as free, as lofty, as advanced as its women are free, noble and progressive. I pray every single moment of my life not on my knees but with my work. My prayer is to lift women to equality with men. Work and worship are one with me. I shall earnestly and persistently continue to urge all women to the practical recognition of the old revolutionary maxim. Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. Cautious, careful people, always casting about to preserve their reputations can never effect a reform. Gentlemen, do you not see that so long as society says a woman is incompetent to be a lawyer, minister, or doctor, but has ample ability to be a teacher, that every man of you who chooses this profession tacitly acknowledges that he has no more brains than a woman? I don't want to die as long as I can work, the minute I cannot, I want to go. When I was young, if a girl married poverty, she became a drudge, if she married wealth, she became a doll. Now, Mr. President, we don't intend to trouble you during the campaign but after you are elected, then look out for us. What an absurd notion that women have not intellectual and moral faculties sufficient for anything else but domestic concerns. What words can express her, the white woman's, humiliation when, at the close of this long conflict, the government which she had served so faithfully held her unworthy of a voice in its councils, while it recognized as the political superiors of all the noble women of the nation the Negro men just emerged from slavery, and not only totally illiterate, but also densely ignorant of every public question. I think the girl who is able to earn her own living and pay her own way should be as happy as anybody on earth. The sense of independence and security is very sweet. I have encountered riotous mobs and have been hung in effigy, but my motto is, men's rights are nothing more. Women's rights are nothing less. Women of the North, I ask you to rise up with earnest, honest purpose, and go forward in the way of right, fearlessly, as independent human beings, responsible to God alone for the discharge of every duty, for the faithful use of every gift, the good Father has given you. Forget conventionalisms, forget what the world will say whether you are in your place or out of your place, think your best thoughts, speak your best words, do your best works, looking to your own conscience for approval. To be wedded to an idea may be, after all, the holiest and happiest of marriages. Those who are really in earnest must be willing to be anything or nothing in the world's estimation. I deplore the horrible crime as child murder. No matter what the motive, love of ease, or desire to save from suffering the unborn innocent, the woman is awfully guilty who commits the deed, but oh, thrice guilty is he who drove her to the desperation which compelled her to the crime. 
Let me tell you what I think of bicycling. I think it has done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world. I stand and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a wheel. It gives a woman a feeling of freedom and self-reliance. It makes her feel as if she were independent. The picture of free, untrammeled womanhood. Oh, yes. I do it all again, the spirit is willing yet, I feel the same desire to do the work, but the flesh is weak. It's too bad that our bodies wear out while our interests are just as strong as ever. The one distinct feature of our association has been the right of the individual opinion for every member. We have been beset at every step with the cry that somebody was injuring the cause by the expression of some sentiments that differed with those held by the majority of mankind. The religious persecution of the ages has been done under what was claimed to be the command of God. I distrust those people who know so well what God wants them to do to their fellows, because it always coincides with their own desires. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.